all right guys welcome back so back to what i do best long format videos informing you of as much stuff as i know at the current time so we're going to be doing a wash and talk as you can see the car has been driven quite heavily it's been two weeks since we technically um had the car out from the mini series if you remember so i've tried to space out the videos enough to give it time to obviously pick up some dirt i want it to fully cure over the seven days and now i can actually put product onto the car which won't affect the coating so this car is like actually really bad so again Wash and talk, we're gonna cover a lot of new things. We're gonna talk about some ideas as usual and um, a few updates, like some more things that I'm testing. So let's crack on. So the first thing that you'll notice, I'm on a bit of a rampage at the minute with, um, with new uh, nozzle assemblies. There's the current new one, fully rubberized, so it's even softer so we'll see what this one's like is the camera picking that up that water behavior on the tires it's like a ceramic coated the tires unbelievable so obviously that's the v2 dress so we're going to use my go-to method as usual so you've got the citrus i've just refilled this so the citrus on the wheels, faces, and the barrels. There we go. Now the reason I'm not using the wheels on the wheels is because one, it's carbon ceramic. The product is just too good to use on something that realistically doesn't get as dirty as I say some of my other cars. Okay, I've just refilled this as well. Prime it up and obviously undress on this. Now the arches are literally, they've been absolutely battered. So luckily on the front arches, it's fully plastic. So I'm gonna pre soak it in a ton of undress. And then with my, again, this is my current go-to method. Excuse the noise, they're drilling behind me. Um, my go-to method, obviously, with my development foam soap. Getting all over the car. Um, so the ratio I've got of this is I've got 200 mil in here. So I'm I'm still playing around with what the best of what the best is. Um, but so far, 200 mil. 800 ml of water so it's quite still quite a weak kind of dilution seeing as this foam kind of probably last me or is going to last me 20 set of wheels ish maybe 16 sets now the reason i'm doing this wash and talk i thought look i need to wash the car i'm going to explain to you exactly why and i thought well why not grab the camera i might as well it's um it's going to update you with some certain things so currently black friday is probably five days away so we can talk a little bit about black friday what's going to be potentially happening and then this car is going to mercedes on the 17th on the 17th of december that's it um so it needs it's it doesn't yet need the service it says within 62 days but i thought while i'm at mercedes i'm going to obviously have the car because this will be the first service i've ever done on the car so i'm going to have a deeper service and I, and I know on this service what they're going to be doing is they're going to be lubricating the panoramic roof rails they're going to be changing the brake lines apparently that's an interval and then obviously they're going to drop all the all the fluid and all the filter changes as well as i've requested so i thought you might as well have that done but also what's going to be happening is i knew this was kind of inevitable because of the mileage and I just want to be sure because Kelly drives this more than me anyway this is her car 
um, we're doing a brake pad change. Now, brake discs, again, this is carbon ceramic. So brake discs should theoretically, again, it's all potential and theories here, but theoretically should never be changed. Unless, of course, you're taking it to the track or driving it like a complete idiot, which neither of those things that we do. However, what we've started noticing in the last couple of months is, well, the car was, under, was, was in Mercedes under warranty probably six months back. Just a slight issue, I think it needed an update because we thought the whole engine was misfiring, but it was just literally an update, kind of firmware update. Now, what they did is a health check and they said, your brakes have got about 20 to 25% life left in them. So I thought, oh, well, We'll see it out until the end of the year, which again, we're approaching that kind of period now. But what's been happening is on a downhill, especially, so it's as if the car, obviously with all its weight towards the kind of nose end, what it started doing is it's making more than usual noise for carbon ceramics. It's like real kind of squealy. And obviously we never really get the brakes hot enough for them not to squeal. And as you know, we're like, we're cleaning it as often as we can. But it started making a bit more squeal, so I thought, well, the car's going into Mercedes for a service. Again, I'm going in early, a few months early, actually. So I thought, well, while it's there, might as well get the brakes changed. So I'm not sure if it's the front or the back. So I've told them to order, obviously, all four in, just to make sure. And again, because this is my first time, um, with the carbon ceramic braking system. I thought, well, this would be kind of like a good experience, see how much it is. Obviously other manufacturers have different cost prices, let's call it, right? So I know Porsche and their carbon ceramic systems could be more expensive than these ones. Obviously it's all relative on the car. Um, I may be wrong, you know, but anyway, carbon ceramics aren't cheap even if it's just the brake pads and obviously brake discs, you're talking thousands. So I said, well, can you, can you give me a costing? Either way, I'm booking in. So they said, they said, well, if you do it all together, it's gonna to be a little bit of a discount for you. And I thought, oh, great. So to get all four done, so two fronts, two backs, is gonna cost me about 980 pound. So basically a grand for the brake pads. I'm guessing that includes labor. And then my service is 700 pounds because of the brake lines and the lubrication of the roof and just the usual service that they're gonna have to do anyway. So yeah, it's gonna be very expensive. I'm, I'm actually gonna do a video on this. This is gonna be a running cost video and I'll do it live on the day. So I'll take my, my camera kit to the dealership. I'm actually gonna film my reaction to the actual bill as well, because I'm gonna obviously kind of pick this car up and stuff, and I'm gonna film it in the car. Now again, so I'm seeing potential, I don't know, it might increase, because it's about three, two weeks, two and a bit weeks away. It's obviously the shipping cost might increase because they're being flown over from Germany and all that sort of stuff, but nobody wants to pay a potential of 1,600 pounds on something that started out as a service. <laughs> However, the upside to this is I always say, you buy the big boy cars, you have to pay the big boy bills, you know, but the thing is, again, the brakes, so the car's on 27,000 miles. I don't think it has actually been driven by the one previous owner in the most kind of look after me way. So when we get the brakes, however long we keep the car, it should last probably 30, 35, 40,000 miles. Obviously it depends how we drive it, but like I said, we drive it very carefully and we drive like Miss Daisy.
but obviously, as I said, I'm going to do the video. I think the brakes, the time, I think Kelly, it's not that she doesn't feel safe. You know, when I tell her, look, the brakes need changing, and she thinks the worst all the time, which again, as you would. So what the plan was, I've just whipped the Lupo out, which is just behind me there. And I'm going to put this in and I'm going to just obviously keep it in here up and till the service no point putting any extra strain on the brakes when you know they've probably got a thousand miles left on them there's no needs and like i said on my previous video this is the plan anyway get one car in get one car out keep on top of them keep them a hundred percent obviously this is my forte what it, like i'm doing now so why not obviously use my passion for keeping my personal cars clean you know whilst i can obviously top this i can hit the interior give it a good um give it kind of a good reprotection on the inside where obviously applicable and the car has done probably in that two weeks that has been out it's probably done close to a thousand miles um, my mum came to visit first time she hasn't driven a car down here I don't know why she just had to take the train so when we were, when we dropped my mum off so we had an 18 hour day that day we dropped her off and we then drive home so 35 minutes home to then get home and receive a phone call from mum saying all oh, the trains have been cancelled because some lines in the middle and in the north are completely out so 35 40 minutes driving back to the train station and then driving three hours to take my mum home when you've had an 18 hour day in the pouring rain with a thunderstorm there i'm back so yeah this car has been abused in a driving way almost mileage in the wet but again it's going to give me a good a good baseline to how the coating is doing of course i mean the coating is going to be really hydrophobic it's hydrophobic now but then especially when you clean it it's going to be fresh it's going to look amazing so i'm expecting nothing less and i'm not going to say oh look at the beading as you would expect like a fresh coat of wax but still i want to see what consistency the beads are how the car blows dry how the drying aid takes to it like it's all testing because some products don't play as well with each other as other products so i just want to obviously make sure i'm on the right track here with it so obviously with black friday only technically a few days away um this will also give me an opportunity to worry about one uh one less car to clean one less car to maintain you know stuff like that the beauty of dress v2 even like I said, first of all, you could still see that there was just a little bit of tie dress left, even with hundreds of miles of rain kind of driving. But you don't technically have to scrub it clean. That's the huge beauty about it. You just whip over it with something that's medium to stiffness like this, and you should be good. Never forget, oh, <laughs> never forget the exhaust. A lot of people email me, message me with comments saying, well, my exhaust is all messed up. How do you maintain it? Like this. Every time you do your wheels, hit your exhaust. It's super simple. Literally in this case, I'm just gonna use citrus. You can use a little bit of undress maybe, or wheels, and a bit of a detailing brush, and a wheel woolly, and that's it. it's easier than cleaning your wheels and, then, and around the parts that the wheel woolies can never get into just literally a soft brush these exhausts are protected along with the paint so they're a doddle and if you do inherit a car obviously sometimes that has got like your 
chrome tips and you can see a little bit of embedded contaminants just give them a metal polish protect them and continue like i'm doing super simple so as you can still see i haven't got my viper chair because straight after this video i am obviously after i finish the car the car is inside i am filming the assembly of the viper chair i cannot wait cost us how much did i pay 450 500 pounds can't remember give or take 50 quid um people are going to lose their minds like they always do 500 pound for a chair you must be smoking something good unfortunately i'm not unfortunately as well <laughs> but this chair is from what i've seen again i can't comment accurately but hopefully on the next wash and chat, obviously this chair is only going to be brought out here when it's weather like this, when it's dry. Obviously, I'm not going to wash the car in wet anyway. However, this is going to be my baby chair. Like I said on the previous video, uh, more than likely I'm going to go over to, uh, to Viper as well afterwards. Unless John can hook me up with a custom one, I'm not sure, obviously. But it might be easier just to do the design over with the Americans. Um, and then I'm going to get a custom one done as well, so that you're going to see that in all my videos. I cannot wait. So that's why I'm not sitting on it and I'm still crouching down like a normal person. <laughs> but yeah, after this, um, as soon as, obviously as soon as i'm finished this because again the uk we're starting to uh, drop a little bit of light now fairly quickly so i wanted to do this while it's you know i've got a bit of kind of daylight and then i'm going to do inside where i can have daylight 24 7 pretty much <laughs> um so yeah it's going to be an interesting assembly i'm going to do it obviously all on camera so it's going to be it's it's trickier than you think you know when you're assembling yourself you can um but i'm going to literally just try and read the manual i'm going to assemble it how they recommend it so hopefully there won't be too much cursing inside my head on that one it should be fairly straightforward but there is quite a lot of nuts and bolts because it's it's a full metal construction handmade well, handmade, but not assembled in the US, obviously, because it would be too expensive because the box would be huge. But everything, like all the steel and all that is just, it looks high quality. I haven't unpacked the box yet either. So to give it the most authentic unboxing slash assembly possible. In fact, for the faces, I might use my trusty old wheel woolly brush. I haven't used this in a few weeks. So nice little boar's hair if anybody's wondering. Wheel Woolies again, also made in America. We deal pretty much all with America, so they speak our language. It's easier because you can call these people. So yeah, Wheel Woolies have been good to us. Uh, the only thing that at the minute, but that's with everybody. I think overall we've had like a 37 or 39 pretty much 40% price increase across the board. So in the last 13 months, um, obviously not on one hit, but about 30, 40% were down on these. So, and obviously you can't charge anymore because these idiots decide to start a price war, pound cheaper, pound cheaper. And before you know it, everybody's selling them at 40 quid when technically there should be 60, 70. In fact, there should be a little bit more than what we're selling. Well, because everybody wants to claw at their necks for a custom, everybody's that desperate. They're avoiding the guidance from Wheel Woolly and they're going cheaper and cheaper. Because wheel, what Wheel Woolly do, I think this is quite a, a big American thing. It's called an MSRP and they do map pricing. So, but they can't introduce, like this is if you want to learn, but map pricing in the US is a big thing among the dealers. Um, and they try and enforce it, but internationally they can't enforce it. So what happens is you get wheel woolies who recommend you, you know, an, uh, an MSRP price. I think there's like a hundred dollars. I'm not ninety or a hundred, something like that. Now you go on Google, 
and you do a conversion rate of 100 or 90 dollars into british pounds and see how much that is and now go and compare what people are selling them for now what you're going to say is what well, people can sell them for what they want correct they can sell it for a pound if they want to but what we will is do like so basically every business normally they work off a retail price so imagine 100 pound 100 dollars i mean and then they'll give you a margin off that. So they'll say, there you go, this is what you buy your, say, wheel wheelies for, boom. So we're always at a margin, but because the MSRP is so high, the cost price is ridiculously high. So when these people are selling for 45 pound, they're probably making, I don't know, five, 10 quid if they're lucky. I, I don't even know because you've got to encounter import, shipping, and shipping, as you all know, going from two and a half thousand to twenty five thousand a container it's like literally skyrocketing so everybody's clawing at their necks for a customer like oh we want to get you and we want to get you and obviously we're going to beat company x against company y and we're going to sell it for a pound cheaper and then the other company will sell it for a pound cheaper and before you know it there's a huge price war and that's where we are right now so um whereas we looked at i said i'm not making you know, 1% margin because what people say, well, you can make a 1% margin, but what they don't realize is you've got facilities to pay for electric insurance. Like our insurance bill is ridiculous. Our VAT bill every month is ridiculous. So people think, oh, you make £2.50, for example, off a wheel wheelie. That's good enough. But then every day you're losing hundreds and hundreds of pounds in the upkeep of a business. So I wish they could enforce the map pricing in the UK because it would be so much easier. Oh, and then we get accused of being rip-offs. I wish, in fact, you know what? This will be a good video and I don't think anybody's got the minerals to do this, but I will do it. I will, I will get one of our latest invoices from Wheel Woolies and I will literally hold it up to a camera and I will show you what we're paying, what uh, the margin is, and then you can actually see what you make on a brush and then a brush that lasts you a lifetime pretty much if you look after it like we do and like normal people it'll last you a lifetime so i'm i'm going to do that video and i'm going to obviously the other dealers aren't going to be happy with it but again if i get accused of ripping people then i'm going to obviously prove them wrong in fact i know you can see out in the corner, that's the UPS man. I wish I could get him onto it because he's the one who delivers the wheel wheelies from the stage. He knows how much we pay for shipping, it's ridiculous. And by the way, in no way am I moaning. I hate moaners. I'm just trying to be as transparent as I can because I don't care what people do. I just find it funny. It's just sometimes I read uneducated comments um, that I just think, what planet do you live on? Like, I read a comment recently, a couple of weeks, in fact, a couple of days ago, on this PF22, and obviously some guy asked, I want the best cannon. And a lot of people who are my customers, or even not my customers, have said the PF22.2, because in the kit it comes, that like certain things, all that sort of stuff. And some people come in and go, oh, well, I'm not going to mention brand names here, but X, Y, and Z, you may know who they are. I've got the same cannon. They all look the same and probably Yum. I, just, I don't know why people call me Yum because we're not Yum. Yum cars. Um, they probably get it from the same place. Now, what people fail to realize is... This cannon, yes, it got drawbacks, like for example, the narrow neck, but they'll probably work on it, you know. The Italians will, will have a way of obviously innovating again, but what they don't realize is this cannon is what everybody else is copying, especially with these noses. You know, the foam head technology is here. It's not in the bottle, it's all here. Um, and that's where it's innovative. And all these companies are, are trying to rip kind of you know an original design and i just think you really think that this company is going to the same place that the other company's gone i don't think so so it's the same thing with the wheel woolies um i'm gonna try and kind of obviously bust the door down where i can and obviously educate people because people like me 
I want to kind of be in on on the correct information. The the wrong information obviously has got no place in my head. So obviously, if I do show you the invoices for these, it's not to say, oh well, look, I'm gonna I'm revealing anything private. It's not. It's it's a cost price, and the cost price is extremely bloody high. And you will see this, and you will actually see exactly how much money is to be made of these wheel woolies. It's not a whole heck of a lot. And, you know, like I've, I've always said this, you know, I've always said about the, the whole being in the click. You, if, if you know enough, and by the way, I'm not interested in knowing this, but it's just, I happen just to know this, these things. I like reading up and kind of searching and researching, you know, analyzing things. But a lot of these people who are in the clique and they're all together and they all talk and they all kind of don't compete with each other. But if you're out of the clique, they'll compete with you and they'll try and undercut you and all this. But at the end of the day, that's, it's like it's, it's a cottage business. There's a few people amongst me, you know, there's a few people in this, like Matter Obsessed, for example. Perfect example. When he first started all this, with his kind of vision and what he wanted the best. You know, he's an affluent person. He wants to buy the best things because he can, right? And he got absolutely destroyed on camera. And I just think, wow, like these people do not realize, like if you can't afford it, don't buy it. That's, that's the simple fact of it. Like I always use this example, you don't go into a Ferrari garage and shout to Lucy or whatever. Oh, you are, you know, I don't like you because I can't afford this car. This is a real interesting topic, by the way. I could speak for hours on this, you know, because, yeah. And you don't go into somewhere like that and just hammer them. So why do you hammer three slash four people in the entire world who who actually want to go against the norm. Like you don't have to pay five pound for a wheel woolly from a, a factory that has got no class, has got no clue on who have ripped off the originators, right? Because guess what? It's gonna break on you, right? I refuse to believe that everything has got a market cap or a price cap because in every other industry, there isn't one. You can buy a Windows laptop for 200 quid or you could buy an, an Apple MacBook Pro, or iMac Pro, five, six, seven, eight thousand pound, right? And guess what? The company, you, you would think the company who sell it cheaper would be worth more, like a net worth of more. It's actually the complete opposite way because quality always wins, like I say. I need to make a T-shirt with that slogan. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just re refuse to believe that everybody should fall into the same category and sell one the same crap that's going to break on you whether it's a week or a month or three months down the line either way it's going to break or that you have to always be in this click and you always have to go towards the same suppliers it's it's it, it's rubbish and anybody who doesn't agree with what i've just said there's something wrong with you i think the people who've been around the block will either silently or publicly will not in agreement and by the way you know if you think I'm wrong you know it's 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 fine I don't agree with some things that people who are not always right you know I don't always agree with their point of view but I think when it comes to just quality aspect like a customer as a customer I would expect the best service some people are are price-based customers which again is completely fine some people are quality-based customers and people want to come into a shop and they want to spec a high-end computer or a lower-end computer because each one has the market it's the same with cars so yeah i don't know why i got into that tangent uh, I was talking about wheel woolies actually, yeah, so the wheel woolies, um, I'll, I'll be very interested to make that video on you guys because I've spoken to America a lot about this. I've voiced my 
concern, let's call it. And by the way, they agreed with me because they said, well, we can't enforce international, you know, MAP or map pricing. We just can't enforce it. Obviously, I think you can because all our international resellers are within exactly the same bracket as each other. Margins may vary. That I agree with. But the final retail price, you should give a person the option of selling five, 10, maybe 15% up or down. Sometimes people, you know, are selling 30, 40% below the market cap. And this is where this industry is becoming, or is still wrong, not becoming, but still um, a little bit of a cottage industry because it's new, it's innovative. You know, people are trying to get in on the action. And some people who do business, like with me, have I had 57 businesses in the past? No, I'm a rook or rookie here yeah, in the business term. I'm, I'm at infant level, uh, whereas some people aren't. But a lot of people come in and, you, and you've seen it yourself. 97% off every other week or every other day, in fact. Buy one, get 15 free. I mean, what? that is not the way businesses run. You don't see big companies doing this. And the reason they do it is going back to my original point is they're all at each other's necks trying to skimp a quid here, five quid there. They're all trying to, you know, pinch everybody's customers where it should be. The only way you should be able to pinch somebody's customer is on the quality and the value offered. That, that is that should be the only thing that should matter in business all right guys so i'm testing a brand new quarter inch plug as well looks beautiful so trying some new angles out keeping it fresh so i've just pre-rinsed the car off vehicle and then i'm just gonna do uh just the foam method so again pre-rinsed beaten beautifully still not beaten as good as it will be after it's washed because again there's a little bit of surface kind of dirt and stuff so foam 150 mil rest with water so 850 water and then i'm going to rinse and i'm not going to double foam it on this one because i want to really kind of get my geek side out and i want to feel how slick the car is so So I've attached a new nozzle assembly on our 2.0 Lance. Um, let's see how it goes. Well, yes, guys, let me know on my last little <coughs> discussion slash rant. Oh, that's slick. Wow. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, it is called the washing chat, even though I'm chatting to myself. So it's not always fun. But I think I'm right. It's, it's the way of the world now, I think. When you compare how other people do business, I think sometimes in this industry, practices can be slightly questionable, let's call it. But Black Friday, everybody obviously would have received our info email about the dates, obviously the 26th of November being the last Friday, the real Black Friday, not like people starting it in June already. So I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I'm not going to give you the numbers on this video. I'm going to have to wait an extra few days for that. But basically, everything is going to go. Obviously, at varying levels, 
of discount as I've as I've just mentioned. So obviously some items will be a little bit higher, some items will be a little bit smaller in terms of discount. So but everything is gonna go on. Even the Kranzels. And when I say to you the discount is gonna be small, it's gonna be small in the Kranzels. Unfortunately Germany don't give us that much discount. Which is a shame. Um, we have sold a good number of machines through them. Higher than average, let's just say. <laughs> uh, but still, I'm not complaining. I am and I'm not because I realize what goes into those machines. So I can't really say, well, I wish I had 79 million percent discount because that's never going to happen. So I've been stockpiling one stock which by the way to the few select people who watch this video they kind of know our situation but for the majority they don't we already carry a huge huge amount of stock or or we store a huge amount of stock now when now when i tell you that i've been acquiring or acquisition of stock this is where we've kind of, with the previous videos, where I've said to you that it becomes a storage issue because after a while, you need like an Amazon warehouse. So we've literally, we've hoarded uh, cardboard boxes, packing tape, all the kind of ancillary things that go into a parcel. We've got a pallet, a pallet of refreshers. So I don't know, we've got like 10,000 or whatever it is. I thought, why not? Go big or go home, as I say, you know? So the products, we've, we've had the machines on 24 seven and that's for the liquid lines and for the ex like accessory lines. We are gonna obviously run a heavier discount probably on on the microfiber towels so if you are in the market for top spec microfiber check our website out because obviously the new microfiber line is incoming yeah so microfiber is going to be a big hit um, I would highly recommend obviously I always say this is why the microfiber package exists um, of how many we recommend to have inside your cupboards, cabinets, whatever it is you store your microfiber towels in. Um, so if you are kind of running dry, perfect time, or if you want to just kind of restock and stuff like that, they're going to be really good deals. Um, but the main reason as well, obviously we are a business. We have to make revenue to kind of keep the whole operation going, to keep kind of filming like this going but still we've had i i always say this we get a ton of support from all of you guys which is more than i can ever ask for so this is our technically our one official sale in the year where we also say to you thank you so much and we give them back to you yes so the retailers do it but other retailers are just saying, yep, sale, that's it. Whereas with us, we're, we're thanking you. Because without you, there is no me or Kelly. Or anything else. So, yes, everything, as I was saying anyway. We've had the machines on 24-7 for the last, I'd say, six to eight weeks. Obviously, orders are still heavy for us. So it's kind of a, ne a never-ending battle. You make some, you sell some, you make some more. And, but it's all part of the enjoyment that we kind of have of doing it. But more than ever, the machines have been working 24 seven. We've been, you know, packing towels, packing wheel wheelies, assembling guns, like absolutely crazy because I expect <clears throat> that the Black Friday event this year is gonna be at least two times, maybe even three times the size. 
from all the analytics that I'm looking on the back end of the website. If my analytics throughout the year carry on onto the Black Friday, you're looking at three, four times of what it was last year. And can remember that infamous picture that I did in the big truck <laughs> where it was full. So there's going to be some real fireworks happening in a couple of days' time. Um, but like I said, everything, there's going to be, even on the bundles, obviously the bundles are already pretty much heavily uh, pre-discounted. But again, we can probably knock off 5, 7, 10%, something like that. Just so if you are buying gifts, um, I've got some exclusives coming but I'm not going to launch them on this website. It's going to be on the new website. So either new style bundles or new variations of products. You guys are just going to have to wait up until the new website, which is hopefully a couple of weeks. Well, actually, regards the website, um, we were on a Zoom meeting. So what day are we on now? Today. Yeah, so we were on a Zoom meeting on, fr uh, on Monday with them. Or Tuesday, I'm sorry. And there's still a lot of work, you know, and he just wanted to kind of show us what he's done. I don't know why, but yeah. Um, I won't go into the anger part of the website. This is the wrong video for this. But basically, from what I can tell, we're probably... I tried to push it for the Black Friday, and realistically, you'd be stupid too, you know we're going to have you know thousands of thousands of people hitting the website at you know almost an instantaneous time and the last thing you want to have is any teething problems which everything that's new whether it's a house brand new car will have so we're going to probably wait up until i don't know whether we do it before christmas or after christmas like a new year transition we're going to have to do it carefully because the website, you know, it, it does have a lot of daily traffic, whether it's existing users or uniques, as, as the analytic calls it. Uh, so hopefully a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Uh, obviously, everything is rebuilt. It'll be under one roof, whereas in, in the past, obviously, you've had two shops in there, a membership shop, a membership complete, like almost like a different website. It's all going to be under one, so I can't wait. Obviously, I know we've got, if you're one of these people, I apologize to you, but we've got a line that stretches around the block of traders who we've had to, for now, say to hold and bless them. They've been emailing us every week since, I think, April or May, which is not acceptable, but then again, Luckily, it's not my fault on this one. It's people who can't make the codes work on the website. But they've all, there's a line of traders. You know, hundreds and hundreds of traders are, are gagging to get onto our new, uh, what's it called, on the trade account side. But again, trade accounts have been completely re-engineered. There's a reason behind the madness, guys, as to why it's taken so long. So when... Hopefully you can hold off another four, six weeks, which I think this is the final four, six weeks. Otherwise, I'm going to start throwing things at people. But then again, it's going to be such a beautiful experience for you all. I can't wait to share it with you. And the fact that the whole front end of the website just looks as our version one website should have looked. But then again, like I said on my previous video, the whole maturing in business is it takes time you know i'm sure apple would have wanted to be the apple they are now 30 years ago of course they did um and how we are going to be in 30 years now from well 30 years time from now it's going to be a completely different image but we're organically improving everything that hopefully will give you kind of an, the best experience. And again, you should, and I'm sure people realize this, it goes without saying, but people realize that, you know, 
the growing pains and all of this. It just comes with the territory. Right, rinse time, I'm gonna get it in. In fact, I'm gonna rinse it. I'm gonna blow it outside today because it's super hydrophobic. So as less water on the Swiss tracks as I can get, the better. Um, it's just less evaporation time for them. So I'm gonna blow it with my cordless and then I'm gonna show you this new drying aid. Well, it's not new to me and to you, but it's new for this paint. So yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fairly cool. I've been testing this drying aid for five months now. As I said, it's not new to the range. It's, it's already an existing product, but I was, I was checking if it was compatible with this paint in the inconspicuous areas, as you call it. And it's, it's more than just compatible. It just bonds lovely with this. Let's have a look at the true water behavior now. Look at that glass. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to pool the water. I know it's very hard with a pressure washer, but I'm trying to hold it close. So let's just see at the speed of what it kind of sheets. Yeah, look at that. So aggressive. Now the trims are holding up well again. You know, it was never designed for the trim, but you know, that's where the testing comes in. And it looks great. Yeah, it's looking beautiful. It's holding up really well. Um, I want to see how it dries up, especially on the trim. I want to see the finish that it's leaving. All right, so my typical method, I'm just going to dry the car now um, to about 90, 85%, something like that and then that will allow me to use just a handful of towels in the drying aid and it will look like it always does. But this method only works as you're going to see now with only if your car is super protected and super hydrophobic. Right, so before we continue, I already did an Instagram story about this. Now, somebody, I think it's a follower, has sent us, well, sent me, was addressed to me. So somebody screen grabbed my face and sent me a pair of socks with my face on it. Saying Yum Cars. Watch this. Look at that. Still perfect out the park. <laughs> How outrageously ridiculous is that? <laughs> oh well, so whoever this is, you've actually made me smile. So I might try them on. But if they rip on me in two weeks, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, so I've got my own face with my own brand on that I'm gonna wear my own feet. I think it's cool. Right, so by the way, I appreciate that. Um, so Cars inside, now the method that a lot of people use is they get a huge drying towel and they just drag it across the car, which again is fine. Now what I like to do is I like to put the upfront work in to get the car super protected, get all the surfaces as well protected, so plastics, grills, glass. So what you've just seen me do is blow the car to about, I would say, 
it's not even 85%, it's 90, 95%. Now on this bonnet, very hard to pick up obviously because we've got amazing lightning in here. Um, I've tried to dim the camera as much as I can. Now what you're seeing in here, or if you can see it, great. If you can't, I'm gonna tell you. It's about 40, maybe 450 kind of dots of high, high density beads, so really perfect beads. Now, what I like them to do is if you do have a big drying towel, you can whip over the car in a matter of seconds and your towel's not even gonna be wet. Now what I like to do is I like to use a drying aid because don't forget, whichever towel you have, whether it's one of our super soft, you know, high quality towels or even the cheapy ones, they are classed as an abrasive. Anything that touches your paint, including your hand, is abrading the paint. Therefore, scratches, swirls, stuff like that. Now, this method I've used for a long time now and it's worked really, really well for me. Um, so, I've been testing this in my own time. Nobody knew about this. I was just doing my own background testing. And even, either way, even if it didn't work out, I'd say, look, it hasn't worked. In this case, it has worked. So, our detail spray, loved by thousands, used by many. You know, it's, it's an unbelievable product. Now, what I've been doing is an inconspicuous area, but a large enough area where I can compare, is there any color change? Is there any blotchiness? Is there any streaking? Anything like that? Because this is matte, so you've got to kind of look at a few extra things that you wouldn't have to look at if it was just your traditional gloss car. Now, what I've deducted is a little bit like our coating that we applied a couple of weeks ago, um, that is still in testing, is with this, what you will find, and by the way, we've had now, I've pushed this out privately to a few people who've got matte cars, they've come in or they've emailed us saying, look, we need a solution. I gave them the solution on the back of my testing. And again, this has been happening over six, maybe nine months. Um, and the results are just stunning. So once again, we're reverting back to, again, the one product that we always revert back to is the detail spray as the drying aid. What this leaves behind though is such an anti-static kind of feel. It's just, this is already slick, but this just takes it to another level. So. Please try this on your cars, gloss, satin, matte, whatever. It's, it's uh, unbelievable. So what I like to do is I like, just like to give it a bit of a mist. That's pretty much it. And then I'll take, say, my drying towel, even though it's not a drying towel, but a wet towel that will pick up all the water. There we go. And while it's picking up the water, it's also pushing the product into all the pores like this. Look at that. Right, the bonnet's dry. All right, fantastic. You then take your secondary dry virgin towel and you just give it just a final buff. Oh my God. It, it, honestly, guys, this, this product is I don't even know how we can even attempt to reformulate this. There we go. Not a single gloss kind of spot. Not a single streak mark. It's just an all-rounder. So that's how I dry the car. So now you're going to follow me around as I dry the car. So if you can just see out the corner of your eye, there's the Viper chair that's about to get the treatment from me straight after I do this video. So hopefully in a couple of weeks, you're gonna see it. Um, in the meantime, obviously I'm gonna be using it daily. Um, I'm gonna take it next door as well. I spend most of my time next door nowadays and it's just gonna get all sorts of use. We're gonna get every single member of the team to try it, sit on it, give us our thoughts, and then we'll go from there. I'll give you a perfect example. This chair, like I said, it's an in-between chair. The casters aren't big enough to go over anything more than a grain of sand. Um, yeah. But like I said, I've been waiting out. I wanted to do it properly. I wanted to support my friend John. So hence why I've been waiting. Um, but finally they've arrived. And I cannot wait to build it. I think it's gonna be a cool little project. Um, so anyway, the plan for this car 
is it's going to sit here now for the next couple of weeks so obviously the people that are local that come to shop with us fantastic you can come see how the coating is looking you can kind of see it firsthand and then it goes off to mercedes i'm going to get build a mini mortgage and then it's going to come out uh realistically i'm going to see which car we use kind of heavily through winter like i've always said this this car is most likely the workhorse so this is going to get used more than the lupo i mean don't get me wrong the lupo is not a garage queen it gets also used but the fact that we've got new brakes on it's going to be winter we've got brand spanking tires on both cars so either way we're just going to keep cycling them probably weekly get it in clean it like i am now and then the week after we're going to get all the new um, kind of a dirtier car in here so the car that we've been driving i'm going to continue um so yeah it's almost christmas as well so i've got a little plan in the new year or coming up to new year the, the calendar year in terms of 1st of January, I'm going to refocus on certain projects. I'm going to take less workload on again, like me and Kel have been talking about this for a long time now. It's, I, I always feel awful. I make, I make a joke about this, but I still feel awful because sometimes the stuff that's going to happen or is happening either there or behind us it's just you know it's it's a lot of work and for obviously i know why kelly's saying it bless her she is lovely and she says well you need to go and do your thing because she doesn't kind of understand some of the things i understand with editing and stuff like that otherwise she'd probably do it as well and by the way she's going to sink her teeth in editing which would be cool because she's such a, a good researcher like literally a previous job has set her up for this like perfectly but because she's such a good researcher she'll probably start editing much better than me probably filming better than me in fact while i'm at this angle i might as well show you i'm doing some tests on ceramic gonna be an interesting one this is a heavy chair that is heavy there we go next video it's gonna be sick can't wait for us but anyway with this method guys if you want to use um, a drying towel which by the way I normally use it I just don't want to give away something that's coming very very soon um, that's why I'm using the plush towels on this one just please stay tuned I've got a, such an amazing drop if obviously you'll probably guess what it is already know what it is the people who really follow us but i didn't want to reveal it what it looks like what it feels like that's obviously part of the surprise right so i'm going to tidy up the final few drops that are always you can't avoid um but guys that's basically the car done um i'm not going to dress the tires now so i'm going to dry the wheels dress the tire um, dry the tires sorry and then i'm going to dress them tomorrow normally i like to let everything kind of gas off because no matter how much you wipe how much you dry there's always going to be a dot that kind of drops kind of somewhere so i'd rather wait for the cold car to almost evaporate it's warm in here that's why i'm wearing a t-shirt it's almost december and it's still warm um but yeah guys as always uh, thank you very much for watching thank you very much for supporting Hope you've enjoyed this video and as always, hope you've enjoyed the conversation. This is the thing. Hope you've enjoyed the in-between, um, what people normally don't talk about, but that I will. But yeah, if you've got any points on anything that I said, please mention it down in the comments. I appreciate it. People coming in the video kind of help, help the video get discovered a little bit more. Um, but apart from that, Thank you so much and I will catch you on the next one with the Viper chair. Have a good week guys.